Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and the first part of a two-part watercolour tutorial where I'm going to show you how I painted the short hair and nose on this horse. In part two, I'll go through my process for tackling the longer hair of the horse's mane and finishing off the neck and any final touches. I had intended to do the whole lot in one video, but time has not been on my side this week and rather than rush the painting or delay the video, I thought I'd split it up, so I hope you enjoy it. Now, as with a lot of my animal paintings, I started off this one with the eyes, but I'm not gonna go into how I painted those today, as I did a horse's eye study in a recent video, and I'll link that in a card at the end of this video if you want to go and check it out. So, let's get started. I began by drawing out an accurate outline sketch onto my cold press watercolour paper, and used a kneaded eraser to lighten it up a bit before taping it down onto a wooden board. All the materials I'm using today can be found in the description box along with a reference photo from Pixabay, but you don't have to have the same supplies as me to take advantage of this tutorial, they're just there if you want them. It's also worth saying that the methods I use in this painting are not the only way you can paint short hair or fur in watercolour, it's just my way, so it's not necessarily right or wrong. You use whichever way works best for you and your style of painting. I started this painting using the wet on wet technique to paint the very dark area inside the horse's ears. I pre-wet my paper first with clean water before dropping in some burnt umber. This area is one of the darkest parts of the horse's face, so whilst the paper is still damp, I also drop in some sepia and let the colours mix together on the paper. For me, getting in some of the darkest areas first, like the eyes and the ears in this piece, acts as a helpful marker for the rest of the values in the painting, alongside the white of the paper, which is the lightest value. Now before this first layer on the ears has dried, I'm going in with a damp size 1 detail brush to lift off some paint where I can see a few lighter hairs visible in my reference photo. I wipe off the excess paint on a paper towel each time and repeat this on the other ear. Next, I'm going to start on the base layer of the horse's face, and as with the ears, I pre-wet my paper first before adding paint. I wet the whole of the horse's forehead and nose, but avoid the eyes and the white stripe which runs down the centre of his head. Then I start to add in some watery burnt sienna. I'm not going in for lots of detail or individual hairs at this stage, I just want to get some paint on the paper to establish a base. I like to work in layers from light to dark and build up gradually, as it's easier to go darker with watercolour, but much harder to go lighter. The right hand side of the horse's face is in more shadow, so I add in a bit of watery burnt umber to the wet paper. I continue this process over the whole of the horse's head using burnt sienna and burnt umber, and my reference photo as a guide to help me pick out where the lightest and darkest areas are going to be. Another very dark area in the photo is the horse's neck, so I start to put in a base layer here too using burnt umber on wet paper. I add in sepia while it's still wet like I did for the horse's ears. For the base layer of the mane, I add a watery mix of burnt sienna, like I did for the face, using a size 3 mop brush. And I put a suggestion in underneath where the mane is going to finish. Now I'm using my fine size 1 brush again, and whilst the paper is still damp, just to lift out some highlights. This will help me later on in part 2 when I concentrate on the mane. With that done though, it was time to move on to the horse's nose and as before I began by pre-wetting the area with clean water before dropping in a mixture of Naples yellow reddish with a tiny dash of transparent red deep. Whilst the paper was still wet, I could then add in some more concentrated pigment without getting any harsh edges. This part of the nose needs to dry fully before I can go in and paint the darkest part of the nostrils. So I turn my attentions to the side of the nose and use a dilute mixture of Payne's Grey. The horse's bottom lip is also painted using Payne's Grey but a little bit more concentrated. I 
I use the more concentrated Payne's Grey on the wet paper just to add a little bit of detail on the side of the nose as well. With this dry, I could then go in and fill in the darkest part of the horse's nostrils. I'm using Payne's Grey again and working on wet paper with my size 8 pointed brush. I use a more concentrated Payne's Grey to intensify the colour in this darkest area and let it bleed out and mix on the paper. And I continue to paint the rest of the horse's nose in exactly the same way, so pre-wetting the area first with clean water and then dropping in Payne's Grey and intensifying the colour if I need to whilst the paper is still wet. I am careful though not to paint over areas that I want to keep white. This along with a lot of the other areas will need to be darkened up at later stages in the painting, but it's a good place to start. But with that all dry I can then start to add the next layer to the horse's head. I begin again pre-wetting the paper but adding more concentrated pigments this time. At this point though I am still using just the same two colours, so that's Burnt Sienna and Burnt Umber, in varying concentrations where I can see different areas of light and dark on my reference photo. As I move down the length of the horse's face I make sure to soften any edges with a clean damp brush. I'm trying to create a really soft looking texture for the short shiny fur on the horse's face so we don't want any harsh edges. Using the wet in wet technique can really help prevent getting any harsh edges, so I'm using it again here on the side of the horse's face. Here though I'm using a much more concentrated burnt sienna as the colours are really vibrant here. I drop in some burnt umber and some sepia in the shadow areas, and let it mix together on the wet paper. At this point I also start to define that little vein detail on the side of his face before going back in with another layer. My colours are less watery now but the first light layers I'd mapped out before really helped me to see where I need to paint to build up the shape and form on this horse's face. I also start to hint at the length and direction of the horse's hair by using short flicky strokes with my brush in the direction of the hair growth. I let this dry and go back and add in some more concentrated pigment and a bit more detail to the forelock. For this I'm using the tip of my brush. And with a bit more shading around the eye I can now begin to build up the face again and for this I apply my paint directly onto dry paper. Applying your paint to dry paper really gives you a bit more control over where your paint goes compared with the wet in wet technique and I really like using this wet on dry method for where I'm adding details to my paintings. And you can still soften any harsh edges using a clean damp brush. Now up until now I've mainly been using burnt sienna, burnt umber and sepia for this painting but as I build up the layers I start to add in some mauve too. This goes really well with the orangey brown of the burnt sienna to add in a bit more vibrancy and interest to the painting. But with these additional layers on the face I now need to go back and darken up the darkest parts of the painting again, so that's the ears and the nose. For the ears I use a more concentrated sepia and for the nostrils I'm using neutral tint. I'm painting wet on dry again here so I can more easily add detail and with less water I can get the dark value I need to add contrast and depth. I also use the neutral tint to redefine some of the markings above the mouth here and use a much more dilute neutral tint to add definition to the creases and folds on the horse's muzzle. I add a bit more of my pinky orange mix to his nose too. And extend this up into the white area of his nose too, before adding in some Payne's Grey, just really diluted but this area wasn't completely white so it helps to break it up and make it look a bit more realistic.
so at this stage I think the portrait is starting to come together but I still want to add in a bit more colour intensity to really help it come to life. So with everything dry I began to work on adding in more value and contrast. Here I'm painting on dry paper again, layering over the same paint mixes that I've got on my palette. I really study the reference image to make sure I get it as accurate as possible. To paint short hair or fur in watercolour, I generally look at the overall appearance of my reference picture. And as much as I've suggested at hair length and direction in parts of my painting today, the overall appearance of this horse's fur or hair was very smooth and flat. I haven't painted in individual hairs as I thought it might take away from the overall smooth appearance and it would take for ages, but that's personal choice and depends on your individual style. If however you do want to paint in individual hairs, you do need to make sure that your brush strokes are the same length as the hair you're painting and work in the same direction as the hair growth if you're aiming for realism. So here you can see I'm using the tip of my brush and I'm working in the direction the hair is growing in, but I'm not putting in loads of detail, I'm just putting that suggestion there. I also plan on adding some white gouache with a fine paintbrush at the end of the painting just to add some fine details and whiskers. So this is how I finished up on day one. And after having a break and coming at it with fresh eyes, I decided to do a quick value check. For this, I took a photo of my painting so far, next to a printout of my reference photo. I then converted this image to black and white so I could better get a look at my values, without colour being a distraction. And close up, it's not too bad, but there are definitely areas that could do with a bit of improvement. The area under the eye here isn't quite dark enough and neither is the horse's cheek. And on the right hand side that definitely needs to be a lot darker. And the pinky area above the nose also needs to go darker. As well as obviously the neck, but I'm going to do that along with the mane in the next part of this tutorial. So with all this in mind I began making those adjustments. At least as best as I could. I started off with the ears and mixed in some neutral tint to my sepia mix and carefully outlined those little hairs that I'd left free of paint. I went into the forelock and darkened that up as well and moved down the face using more concentrated pigments in the areas I'd highlighted there was a need for change. I must just say though that this isn't something that you have to do in order for your paintings to look good or to look realistic, but it is a useful tool if you're not sure what it is in your painting that isn't quite right, or you're not sure what you still need to do before it's complete. But taking colour out of the picture quite literally can really help you see something you might not have seen when comparing the two images in colour, and sometimes the results can be surprising but it all helps to learn and to train our eye to see things differently. I was quite surprised with how much darker I needed to go on the horse's nose and muzzle area. In the reference picture this area looked super pale, but I think by darkening it up it did help to add contrast. On the horse's cheek I added more burnt sienna and burnt umber. and I carried this colour under the side of the face to pull it all together. I added more shadow under the forelock on the forehead and also darkened up the area under and around the eyes. Then it was time to break up that solid band of white hair along the length of the horse's face. For this I used a size 1 brush and some leftover paint on my palette. I used tiny little flicky strokes for this, working in the direction of the hair growth on either side of that white band. 
I use this same fine detail brush to fill in some more detail and definition to the markings on the horse's nose and muzzle. But instead of using Payne's grey or neutral tint like I'd used before, I use some of the leftover browns on my palette. Okay, now I mentioned that I wanted to add in some details with white gouache earlier on, so I used my small paintbrush and painted straight out of the tube to add in highlights in the eye and a few white hairs either side of that white stripe again. So even though I hadn't added individual hair details throughout the whole of the horse portrait, adding these few little details and suggestions can really help to make it look quite lifelike. But with this, this portrait, or at least this part of this portrait, was done. So I'd love to know what you think. If you like the video, give it a big thumbs up, comment and subscribe below, and make sure you hit the bell icon as well if you want to be alerted when part two becomes available. So thank you so much for watching, have a great weekend, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!